I studied 100 Minecraft builds to become a better builder, and in this video, I'm going to share what I learned with you so that you too can become a better builder. If you like the examples used in this video, please check the description for links to the builders and many others. Let's break down these builds. I referenced pictures as it was a bit easier than videos and gathered data on a few things I think are key building aspects. We measured dimensions, depth, layers, such as clearly distinguished floors, sections, this is how your eye travels across the build, vertically, horizontally, or if the sections are crossed, forming boxes, and how high the roof is. Then we looked at what materials were used for the walls, roof, windows, and exterior doors, and the details that really make the build pop. Let's jump into some specifics. I took the length, width, and height and divided up the builds into size categories to make the data a little easier to look at. Size extra small averages 7 by 7 by 6, small averages 9 by 8 by 6, size medium is 14 by 11 by 8, large is 21 by 15 by 15, and extra large averages 27 by 15 by 13. And the last size, massive, averages 52 by 21 by 20. Starting with size extra small, there's only horizontal sections, no depth, and generally no additional layers. Size small has some builds with horizontal sections and some with vertical, but not both at once. Of the 12 builds in this size, 8 have no depth and no additional layers. When there is depth only by one block, there is usually another layer and it is flush with the main layer. Size medium is where we start to see more variation. We have the full gamut of sections, with horizontal, vertical, and cross. Cross makes the boxes I mentioned earlier. Depth is either one or none, split fairly evenly among the builds of this size. Half of those with a depth of one have a flush additional layer, and around half of those with no depth don't have any additional layers. When layers aren't flush, they are typically going in by one. Large is, well, largely the same. We have all three variations of sections. Most have a depth of one, though there is one build with a depth of two. And out of the 19 in size large, six have an additional layer that goes in one and five that go out one. Extra large also has all three variations of sections. Again, depth is usually one and all but three builds have an additional layer, about half of those being flush, while the rest are distributed between in one, in two, and none. There are two outliers in which there are layers that go out one and then the next layer in two, as well as a build where the top layer goes in by three. And our final size category is massive. Surprisingly, we only have horizontal and vertical sections, no crosses. There are eight builds in this size, four have a depth of one, one has a depth of two, and three have no depth. As for additional layers, there's not much of a pattern, Layers are usually going in towards the center anywhere from one to five blocks, but there are a couple that move out by one. Moving on to the walls and roofs, size extra small walls on average use two materials and they are typically light colored such as birch, oak, calcite diorite, and white wool. Roofs are three to four blocks high and feature two materials, a base material and another to trim the roof and are usually darker in color than the wall materials. Size small walls use two materials, again light in color, but it isn't unusual to see three or four materials with cobblestone, stone, and andesite making an appearance to create a foundation section for the taller builds. Roofs are three to eight high and use three materials. There's more variation in materials here than there is in size extra small. That's because there's more styles of builds. There's generally two blocks that mix well together in the same shade range and a third to trim. Medium has 16 cottages out of the 37 examples and another 15 being medieval and fantasy. We'll use those styles as our basis. Cottage styles tend to use one to two materials for walls with stripped and plant oak and birch being most common. Medieval and fantasy follow a similar pattern to small builds incorporating a foundational section of gray blocks like cobblestone, stone, and andesite, and later blocks for the upper sections, like calcite, diorite, white wool, and both powdered and regular white concrete. Size medium roofs for cottages are averaging six blocks high and have one to two materials. Dark oak is a common choice, as well as using grass blocks and moss, and even amethyst if you like to make a statement. Medieval and fantasy roofs are around 10 high, and they go all out with materials, using four or five and sometimes more. There's a lot of mixed materials within the same color, for example, acacia and orange concrete and powdered concrete. 
then trimmed in a more neutral material, often dark oak or deep slate or blackstone. Now on to size large. As for materials, we're starting to see a pattern emerge. Gray blocks at the bottom, lighter blocks on the top. Roofs are anywhere from 6 to 13 high with an average of 9. Three or four materials are used and again we see a pattern. Most of the materials are of similar color and a different material is used to trim. The materials used in size extra large are a bit of a surprise. That pattern we noticed isn't as prevalent anymore. Some builds do still have a lower section in gray, but most seem to favor one color palette. Similar to the roof pattern, a handful of materials are chosen in the same color and mixed throughout. The lighter colored blocks we've talked about are still common, as well as more mid-tone neutral colors like stripped birch and oak and smooth sandstone. Average roof height is 10, excluding a couple of outliers, though 15 occurs the most. We see less trimming now, but the mix of materials in the same color still applies. We're now seeing four to five materials mixed together, if not more, as opposed to three or four we saw in sizes small through large. And now onto the big boy size massive. Fantasy and modern styles make up this size category. Like in the previous size, one color palette is used for the walls. Fantasy uses mid to light colors. Modern tends to stick to monochromatic colors and blocks with less texture, like white and gray concrete, bone, blackstone, and accents of warm woods and composters for a bit of texture. Roofs are harder to judge here as modern builds tend to have flat roofs. The fantasy roofs average 15 high, but there is a lot of variation. Of the five builds in this group, roofs range from 7 to 22. As for materials, we can only look at the fantasy group, and it is the same as in extra large, four to five materials of the same color. That was a lot of math, but we can put that behind us now. It's time for the best part, the detailing. Trapdoors, that's it, that's all you need. Okay, and maybe fences. Of these 101 builds, 80 used trapdoors and 73 used fences. These two blocks really do a lot of work. Trapdoors are used to edge windowsill flowers, as shutters for windows, to create the illusion of a base at the bottom of a pillar, and sometimes just to provide a bit more texture in an otherwise flat area. Fences are great for offering support for overhangs and peaked roofs. They also serve as small pillars rather than using a block that visually takes up the whole space. Fences are also used a lot to run along the top of roofs. They take up the same amount of space as a full block, but they visually look smaller and sit in the middle of the space, giving the roof a sharper peak. Gates are often used too to offer support and to line the tops of roofs. Barrels and composters are sometimes used to texture walls, but also make for a great base for a pillar. Barrels in particular work well because of the metal bands. Logs and buttons go together too. If you have a beam where the end is exposed, showing that log texture of the tree rings, Adding a button makes it look like there's something nailing the beam in place. Signs, like trapdoors, are good for edging flower beds. Anvils and lecterns start to make an appearance in builds size medium and up. Anvils work well to line the top of the roof, and lecterns are used to line the edge of a walkway or outcropping on the second floor or higher. Basically, anvils and lecterns are like thick, chunky fences used in a more traditional way. Last of our common detailing blocks are slabs and stairs. These are used on the edges of roofs to give a little furl and under the edge of the roofs to connect the roof and wall with a bit more style. For windows, in order of popularity, the materials used are glass panes, trap doors, glowstone, open as in no material, fence, scaffolding, and a loom. Doors, in order of popularity, are spruce, dark oak, oak, birch, open, again as in no material used, just walk right on in, and several one-offs of other wood types. Okay, with all of this info, will I actually be a better builder if I can apply these principles? I haven't practiced, no test run. You're going to see my first attempt right now. First, I decided on the materials, using gray for a bottom layer, white for the top, and a blue to purple gradient for the roof. I decided to try for a medium-sized fantasy build. Using the average size, the main part will be 14 by 11 by eight, I tried to add more shape by creating a perpendicular piece and offsetting it from the edge. That ended up being a pain in the butt later on. We saw in the examples that medieval and fantasy have two levels, a foundation of gray stone materials and white blocks for the top level like wool, calcite, concrete powder, and concrete.
I thought putting a beam to delineate between the foundational layer and the house layer would be a good idea. Because of the weird dimensions of the perpendicular piece, it ended up a bit wonky. This next bit of video is from a first person perspective. You can see my other account person floating around in the background. There was a thunderstorm while I was recording and I lost the footage from the camera account. The average roof height is 10, but since this roof is peaked in the center, I made it 11 high. I tried a gradient of light blue to purple using wool, concrete powder, and concrete. I started with just one color to get the shape right and later replaced blocks to make the gradient. I also outlined the roof in dark oak. Why I thought having the peaks at different heights was a good idea, I don't know, but I guess with a fantasy build, being a little off is part of the charm. Then came the windows using scaffolding and trimming them in dark oak to match the roof trim. I felt like the foundation layer was too chunky, so I broke it up with arched entryways. But having so much open space underneath and being able to see through didn't feel right either, and I ended up building some interior in order to get the look right. Now the bottom is sort of like a storage area along the outer edge, and in the center it's more living space, and of course, the ever popular spruce door. 37 of the 101 builds had a spruce door, which might not seem like a lot, but considering the range of options, it definitely showed up the most. The windows needed some color with plants, and I used trapdoors to edge. They really do so much work with so little effort. Earlier we said beams and buttons go together, so I went around the house and I put a button on the exposed log end. I replaced the bottom of the pillars with a composter for the illusion of a stronger base. After decorating the top of the roof a bit more, I decided to really go for it and do a little flourish at the ends of the peaks. It took a few tries and lots of checking that I was doing it the same each time, but we got there in the end and now my house has horns. I'm not mad at it though. Stepping back from the build, I realized you can't really see the buttons on the logs, so I changed them from oak to dark oak. I added a few finishing touches with a muddy path and a few splashes of leaves dripping from the beams and built up in the corners. And just when I thought I was done, I decided I didn't like the full blocks along the bottom of the roof and changed it out for upside down stairs, and now we're done. I do think this study has made me a better builder, but really the lesson I learned here is to be patient and actually think about what I'm building. It's sort of a mix of science and art. The science gives you a solid basis for a good build and the art gives it personality. Let me know if this was helpful and share your building tips in the comments. And don't forget to check out the people I referenced for this video. Their info is in the description. Thanks for hanging out and have a great rest of your day. Bye.